Hello everyone, my name is Alexey and I'm a software engineer in a Postgres professional company. Today I want to talk about incremental backups in general and uh, particularly about the uh, second major version of uh, PTREC, which is extension now and uh, provides a block level incremental backup engine. Uh, this is a short outline of my talk. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, motivation of uh, incremental backups. Uh, next, uh, in order to simplify the understanding uh, first and second versions of PTREC and uh, its decision made uh, uh, design decisions under um, these uh, versions, uh, I want to show a very top overview of how Postgres works with data pages, uh, write it uh, back to disk and so on. Next, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, not many of you uh, know anything about uh, the first uh, version of PTREC. So I want uh, to cover some uh, implementation details and uh, show you um, maybe some uh, drawbacks of this uh, in first implementation. And uh, next, I want to finally proceed uh, with this second version of uh, PTREC and uh, explain uh, how it, it is implemented in memory, which uh, data structure it uses, and uh, how operations of reading and writing information of about modified blocks um, are done. And uh, next, uh, explain a bit of how it persists uh, between restarts and crashes. Uh, so something about durability. Uh, about limitations of this new implementation and uh, show how public SQL uh, API works and uh, which uh, configuration parameters it has. And next, uh, present uh, some benchmarks uh, with uh, current stable version of uh, Postgres uh, with uh, enabled uh, PDREC extension. Um, so uh, the motivation under uh, taking uh, incremental backups is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's assume that we have a 10 gigabytes uh, database and uh, only half of this data changed uh, since uh, the last backup. Uh, then we copy only those uh, five gigabytes during incremental backup instead of uh, this full backup. So we spend uh, twice less time and we uh, use uh, twice less disk space for storing our backup and that's the profit. Uh, so how can we proceed uh, with uh, taking incremental backups? I will use uh, here a PG Pro Backup uh, terminology. Uh, but um, I guess that uh, all other backing up software uses uh, very similar uh, strategies uh, for taking incremental backups. Uh, first, uh, let's assume that we have a while, uh, while uh, archiving. So every uh, write ahead log segment uh, 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 written to the offline archival storage. So when we uh, want to take our backup, we can get uh, all chain of uh, this uh, right ahead the log files and read uh, every segment, find all modified pages and uh, build uh, some map of modified blocks and uh, finally copy uh, these uh, pages uh, to our backup. So our newly created backup will has uh, only we'll have only um, uh, those pages that were modified since uh, the last backup. Um, we call it uh, page backup. And uh, uh, next uh, possibility is uh, to just read all data files in the page data directory and uh, read every page, uh, read uh, its LSN and compare its LSN with uh, LSN of previous backup. So if it if it was modified since uh, the, that backup, and then we copy it to new newly created backup. And uh, uh, in PG Pro backup, it is called Delta backup. And uh, 
uh, both these methods uh, have uh, some limitations and uh, uh, some drawbacks and uh, some overhead because uh, uh, in case of page backup you have uh, uh, so you have uh, to set up a while archival uh, in your cluster and uh, if uh, for example you have a rather small database but uh, with uh, intense data modifications for example uh, if you have accounts and you constantly transfer money between uh, several accounts so you can produ produce a uh, horrible amount of uh, write ahead log but uh, uh, the final uh, data you have to copy will be rather small so you just waste your time uh, walking through all this uh, write ahead log in case of delta backup uh, the main uh, drawback is that uh, uh, you have to read uh, the entire pg data di directory so uh, it means that actually the read only io pressure uh, on your server will be equal to the full backup so the only profit is that you copy only required data blocks and uh, so in, in both cases you um, uh, backup will be smaller uh, but uh, overhead during backup taking will be uh, significant so that's why uh, first version of ptrack was implemented uh, let's assume that our postgresql server tracks uh, all page modifications on the fly uh, so at the backup backup time we receive a ready to execute map of modified blocks and uh, we do not need uh, to compute uh, and build uh, some uh, map from other sources we just uh, have a bitmap or just copy uh, this block this block and uh, that's all uh, so backups are completely without any additional overhead uh, then uh, to understand where we can put our extension or our engine uh, to track these uh, facts of uh, page modifications let's uh, take a look on uh, how uh, pages flow through the database and uh, uh, how they reading from disk uh, uh, read the from disk and uh, uh, stored and modified so we have uh, some kind of uh, consumer it may be a general backend process, so it may be a background writer or a checkpointer and anything else. And uh, for some reason, it, it, it wants uh, to read some page and modify it. And uh, it asks a buffer manager, <clears throat> I don't want to cover some uh, sophisticated details about how buffer manager works and how it eviction algorithm. Uh, algorithms uh, work but we just ask buffer manager give us uh, th th this page of uh, this relation and uh, if it is already inside the shared memory we just read it uh, and if it's uh, still on disk we ask storage manager uh, through its uh, high level storage manager api uh, which is then mapped uh, to all this uh, low level unix like file system api like read open and um, others uh, it, it reads uh, uh, for us uh, some specific block and passes the, uh, next uh, to buffer manager so finally we receive uh, some buffer some page uh, from buffer manager and uh, we hold the lock on it and uh, modify it somehow. Uh, after that, we mark it as dirty and return back to buffer manager. So when uh, uh, the control returned back to buffer manager, it may uh, once uh, uh, evict this page uh, back to disk and write again to the disk uh, through storage manager API. Um, from um, uh, the source code uh, perspective it looks uh, somehow like that this is an, an example from uh, hip insert like a uh, very uh, general method of inserting uh, data into relation and um, so it, 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 that, that's, that's look the same like uh, on this diagram 
we take some buffer, we start critical section where we modify uh, this page, write uh, xlog uh, information into a write ahead log uh, for durability purposes. So we can't uh, throw any errors in this uh, section. We mark buffer as dirty. Uh, we uh, put LSN in our page uh, and critical section unlock buffer and uh, return control to buff manager. Um, so what uh, was uh, the idea on the first implementation of P-Track? Uh, the main idea was uh, to just utilize uh, the same buffer and storage manager machinery from PostgreSQL because uh, it uh, guarantees us uh, durability and consistency and we do not need uh, to care about uh, how uh, to durably write our data, how to persist it uh, between restarts and uh, crashes, uh, crash recovery processes. Uh, so let's uh, just uh, uh, add another fork. Uh, of course, it's called P-Track fork, in addition to free space map and visibility map. And uh, let's uh, track uh, page modification in each place uh, when it is done. Uh, after that, uh, when uh, the backup time uh, comes, uh, then uh, we just uh, read our P-Track map after a PG start backup call. And uh, we read all these uh, bitmaps of modified blocks uh, for each relation and uh, reset P-Track map. Uh, so after that, uh, uh, Postgres uh, was able to uh, accumulate new changes uh, for the next backup. Uh, so if we return back uh, to this diagram, we try to catch uh, this fact of page modification uh, just uh, in, in the place where it is done, in the uh, backend process and uh, every uh, other utility process, process in the Postgres. So we catch it uh, around uh, the place where this modification on page is done. Uh, and in the code, it will be uh, just before a critical section start. Uh, again, because we cannot uh, throw any errors there uh, inside critical section. And uh, next uh, problem is that uh, uh, so we already read uh, a buffer page uh, for our relation and we hold it. And uh, after that, we need uh, to read another page for uh, for P-Track to mark it uh, page uh, as, as modified there. And uh, maybe buffer manager wants uh, to release uh, and evict some pages, but we already hold some pages. Uh, because we want to modify them. And uh, so we cannot do uh, this uh, all inside critical section because too many side effects and uh, too many problems may occur, occur there and uh, every error will be escalated to much higher um, error levels. Uh, so we put it uh, just before critical section start. And uh, from the first look, it may be not a big problem, but here is a screenshot from uh, VS Code and uh, to search uh, all um, occurrences of uh, this uh, uh, tracking routine call uh, in the repository where P-Track was uh, integrated. And uh, it shows that we have uh, 250 places uh, to put our tracking routine. And uh, it is a horrible amount of uh, places. Of course, half of them uh, is uh, about uh, uh, actually places where modification is done. And half of them is for uh, redo, operation, for redo operations for the same uh, actions. Uh, but anyway, it, it, it is a lot of places. So what, is, uh, the, what are the main uh, drawbacks of uh, this first implementation? Uh, First of all, we cannot put our tracking routine uh, inside uh, some more general place uh, uh, like uh, mark buffer dirty because it is already called inside critical section. And uh, uh, 
Next point uh, follows from the first uh, is uh, that uh, we just have a horrible amount of places uh, to put uh, our tracking routine calls and uh, it is very easy to miss some of them. And uh, if we are talking about some extension, uh, which is also modify, uh, which also modifies um, some pages, uh, do generic XLOG records writing and uh, so on. So we can just uh, kind of track uh, some side uh, extensions and so on. We have to modify them too. And uh, because of these uh, reasons, uh, we, uh, this first implementation was fused into PostgreSQL core and uh, it was, uh, uh, there was no possibility to do it like, ex do it as extension and something like that. Uh, also, since we use uh, another fork uh, per each relation, uh, there was an one additional uh, extra file per each relation. So uh, maybe it is fine, but still you, we have uh, a lot of, for a large database which with a lot of relations, we have uh, additional, uh, a lot of small files, uh, which is also not uh, good uh, for performance. And uh, also, since we read uh, uh, during backup, online backup, we read uh, our bitmaps and uh, perform backup. Uh, uh, and after that, we reset uh, our bitrack map. But uh, uh, in this uh, moment, uh, someone may already write in a new information since it, it is uh, online backup and uh, the database modifications are in progress and uh, someone may already mark new blocks for next backup. And if we reset uh, in this point, there, there are some unavoidable races uh, because uh, 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 of uh, the overall architecture. So there, was, uh, there were some additional workarounds uh, to prevent uh, data loss during uh, this map resets. And uh, next, um, can we do any better uh, in uh, the next implementation of Petrack? Uh, let's uh, return back again uh, to this diagram and uh, uh, take a look on the final final stage of uh, pages flow in the database. So every page in the database uh, is returned back to disk uh, ex 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 accidentally. It, it is returned back to disk uh, through the storage manager uh, and uh, storage manager API. And uh, uh, a lot of places in the database, the Postgres database uh, uses uh, buffer manager API. So uh, all, almost every consumer in the database actually uses, with some exceptions, actually uses buffer manager so we can uh, just track all pages uh, when they actually hit uh, the disk. Uh, so the idea of the next version was uh, to track all operation on this very bottom level in the storage manager, uh, because uh, luckily Postgres mostly modifies everything via uh, buffer manager. And uh, the first benefit of doing this is uh, that uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, crash recovery, replica, and uh, any extensions, uh, and if uh, in all these places uh, they use uh, Buffer Manager API, API. So we do not uh, care and do some additional work to track all these modifications. Uh, however, uh, there are certain operations uh, where Postgres uh, uh, does everything uh, away, uh, in, in a different way uh, without uh, buffer manager. Uh, this uh, uh, number of these uh, operations uh, is uh, small and it, it, it's all only about uh, creating database and moving uh, the entire database to another table space. And, and in these cases, Postgres uh, uses uh, this copy operation to, when uh, it, it just durably copy uh, the entire directory in, in another location and do some sophisticated f things on all files and directory uh, to persist it uh, between uh, restarts and after crash. Um, and uh, 
in this case, uh, we have to uh, do another workaround uh, to track these modifications. Uh, so to write and integrate our new extension, we need uh, to add uh, certain hooks uh, inside the database core. First of all, it is uh, storage manager API hooks. Uh, it is storage manager write, and uh, when we write uh, uh, some page back to disk, and storage manager extend when we add new pages to to to, to relation file. And uh, uh, next is uh, this uh, copy copy dir hook uh, when uh, Postgres copies uh, everything uh, to another location. Uh, without using uh, of, uh, buffer manager and storage manager. Uh, and finally, we need uh, uh, some point where we sync our internal in-memory state uh, with uh, uh, disk. And uh, so the uh, natural place for doing this is a checkpoint, uh, uh, specifically uh, the process sync requests when um, checkpointer written uh, everything back to disk and it wants to sync everything and uh, in, in this place we want uh, to sync our map uh, uh, our internal state uh, with disk uh, as well and uh, uh, that way we have only four places instead of 250 and it is already sounds uh, it, it, it already sounds like a win um, <clears throat> So how can we store uh, our information about uh, uh, page modification in, in each case? Uh, we use uh, a single cluster-wide uh, map uh, for any database, for any relation, and uh, it has uh, some header with uh, uh, overall information about map, when it was uh, last in initialized, uh, uh, what version of Petrack it used, um, uh, and uh, so on. And finally, we have a large uh, entries array uh, of LSNs and uh, uh, it, it has a fixed size. So we have a limited number of entries uh, and uh, we all uh, load all this uh, uh, P-Track map in memory from the file using a memory map a map uh, system call. Uh, and uh, then every page in the database um, uh, is uh, <clears throat> uh, uniquely identified by uh, some uh, database OID, uh, table space, relation OID, uh, fork number, and finally block number. So using these uh, five numbers, we can uniquely identify every page. And if we use a hashing routine, uh, which is uh, uh, which maps uh, uh, all of this uh, page ID to uh, a cell in this entries array, uh, then we can store information about uh, this uh, LSN of uh, this page modification in this cell. And uh, when uh, this moment uh, occurs, so when we need to put this LSN, when this page uh, evicted back to disk, so we can we want to write a new LSN then to say that uh, this page was modified uh, uh, on this LSN, and uh, we use atomic operations here, and uh, we do not use any locks um, uh, because uh, we do not care too much about uh, the fact uh, that uh, someone modified it concurrently. We don't. We, we just want uh, that. Uh, uh, to do not pro, to, to do not do some torn writes or torn reads when we, this LSN uh, was uh, partially written or partially written, uh, we want uh, to write it as as a whole. Uh, and uh, it 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 may sound uh, dangerous, but actually it seems uh, like very safe because uh, uh, when we start a backup, uh, we do a checkpoint. And uh, everything uh, in, in the shared uh, buffers is evicted back to disks and uh, uh, goes through uh, this P-Track tracking routines and we track everything in the map. And after that, if uh, something was uh, modified concurrently, 
then okay it 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 it, it may write uh, uh, fre more fresh uh, uh, lsn but uh, since lsn's uh, goes uh, only uh, rise and so goes only forward then um, uh, anyway uh, this page uh, will be modified since last backup uh, because uh, this newly inserted lsn is uh, past uh, as this previous backup LSN. So we uh, just uh, take them off for maybe more fresh uh, uh, page. And uh, uh, during online backup, we anyway uh, accumulate all uh, right ahead log um, produced in uh, this backup time and we apply it uh, to to do a consistent backup. And uh, it, it seems fine. Uh, during checkpoint, uh, we want uh, to persist our um, uh, map, uh, which is uh, saved in memory, back to disk. And uh, we want it to be persistent between uh, restarts and uh, if uh, accidental car crash uh, occurs and we start with uh, crash recovery process. So for this purpose, we uh, just keep uh, our initial map since last checkpoint intact because uh, we want to use it in the case of accidental cr crash. And uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, that way, we uh, read every bit p track record atomically again, one by one, uh, into some local buffer and write this local buffer chunk by chunk uh, to a transient file um, and uh, repeat it until we read uh, all uh, p track map. Uh, after that, we calculate uh, CRC checksum and write it at the end of file. And finally, we durably replace uh, old P-Track map uh, with newly created uh, when it is ready. Uh, and uh, if, if everything is all right, then uh, P-Track checkpoint is successful and uh, database checkpoint is successful too. Uh, in this case, uh, we also do not need logs because uh, uh, we read everything atomically and, uh, okay, maybe uh, during checkpoint something was modified. Then we read more fresh uh, data uh, than in the beginning of checkpoint. But uh, anyway, it, it is fine. If uh, the crash uh, occurs occurs during checkpoints and we start since previous checkpoint and use our p map file, which is uh, uh, just the same as, as before. We check it, check some to verify that uh, uh, data was not corrupted uh, and uh, during system crash and, and so on. And if uh, the crash occurs uh, after checkpoint in some other, uh, other any any other moment in the database, um, then again we uh, take this uh, PTRAC map and apply all changes again via redo operations and uh, again track. Uh, every operation since everything went uh, through uh, this storage manager API. Uh, of course, uh, this approach uh, has some limitations as well. Uh, first of these limitations uh, is uh, that uh, we allow um, some false positives. It means that uh, since we have a limited uh, uh, entries array, then if we have uh, much more blocks in the database than we have in our uh, p map array, then several blocks may be, marked, uh, may, may, may be marked in the same cell. So for example, the first block uh, was modified and uh, uh, we marked as well uh, maybe 10th and uh, uh, block uh, again uh, as well as modified. Um, uh, However, we never allow false negative, which means that we lost uh, uh, some fact of uh, the data to be mo to be modified. And however, uh, with uh, 64 megabytes of P-Track map, you can track uh, per block changes in a 64 gigabyte database without false positive. So uh, the size of p-track map to track uh, all changes in the large database is pretty small. Uh, next limitation is uh, that you can uh, use p-track map p -track safely with uh, one level uh, more and or equal to replica. 
Uh, actually, it, it, this is a requirement uh, for uh, taking online backups, uh, if I recall this correctly, uh, from the documentation. And it is required since um, uh, certain comments in uh, Postgres uh, uh, are designed uh, not to write while at all, if uh, while level is minimal. They again use uh, some uh, sophisticated uh, F-Syncs uh, and when they sync files and uh, directory and every, if everything w went well, uh, then actually we do not do anything uh, on uh, after, after after crash because uh, everything was uh, saved uh, safely on the disk and uh, on Redo we do nothing. However, uh, since we rely uh, on uh, Redo process in, in our uh, tracking routines, uh, we return back to our previous P-Track map uh, where this uh, operations was not uh, tracked. Uh, and if anything was uh, read, uh, replied uh, from right ahead log, then we just lose uh, all these changes. Uh, so that's why we need uh, at least a replica level of uh, login. And finally, currently you cannot resize P-Track map in runtime. Uh, you can only do it on postmaster start. This is uh, all because uh, we use this uh, memory map and we have a fixed uh, size, fixed uh, uh, map of a fixed size, uh, and uh, CRC sum, checksum is written in the end. So it's very difficult uh, to resize it without uh, uh, without locks. Actually, uh, this point is uh, on our on us on our to do list, and uh, I think that that we can do something uh, without uh, sacrificing uh, performance. Um, for uh, an end user, uh, there are uh, three um, P-Track methods uh, and P3, uh, P-Track SQL functions. First, it, it is P-Track version, uh, which just returns uh, uh, P-Track version string. And next uh, is uh, P-Track init LSN. It uh, returns uh, to a color uh, the LSN of uh, the P-Track map in initialization. It is required for backing up software to identify that uh, P-Track map, map uh, was initialized before uh, previous uh, backup. Uh, otherwise, we have we will have a gap between previous backup and map initialization, and this, in this gap, we do not have. Uh, uh, information about modified blocks, so our uh, incremental backup um, uh, will be corrupted. So that's because we uh, need. Uh, th that's why we need uh, this uh, function call. And uh, uh, finally, we have a um, we, can, we have a function which return, returns uh, bitmap uh, per each relation, and uh, in these bitmaps, all modified blocks. Uh, uh, are marked and uh, we just specify uh, some LSM and uh, receive uh, a set of uh, bitmaps uh, for each uh, block to copy. Uh, uh, to con configure uh, P-Track, uh, there is uh, only one uh, configura configura configurable uh, option and it is a uh, P-Track map size in megabytes and uh, it is um, uh, recommended uh, to set it to 1000th part of your expected PG data size to track everything without false positive. Of course, you can set it in advance. Uh, you can just a bit larger twice or three times larger than your um, uh, expected size uh, just uh, to, to, to reserve some uh, map uh, for future. Uh, to completely uh, disable P-Track and clean up every, everything and uh, delete all remaining uh, service files, uh, you can set uh, P-Track map size uh, uh, to zero and restart server. And uh, on, on the start, it will do some swapping and uh, cleaning up. Uh, that way, uh, the usage of P-Track looks uh, uh, where it's uh, simple because you just have to enable uh, sh shared library of from P-Track and add it uh, to shared preload libraries, uh, set the uh, P-Track map size, 
and uh, start server, uh, create extension to get uh, all this public SQL uh, API. And after that, you can just uh, uh, read the information about uh, uh, about modified blocks uh, since, since every uh, moment in the past. Uh, from uh, the backing up software, uh, the profit of uh, doing incremental backups is pretty obvious. And we, co we compare it with Delta or page backup, uh, then the profit may be uh, like two times or four times uh, or uh, even more if, if in, in some cases. Uh, so the main idea to do some benchmarks was to verify that uh, the overhead of using P-Track uh, is not uh, very large. And uh, uh, the idea was uh, uh, that uh, we do a lot of uh, CPU operations. So, uh, and uh, we have to me measure this uh, CPU overhead because when we, we do checkpoints, it, it is done, but by checkpointer uh, asynchronous and uh, asynchronously, and uh, uh, it, it may not have a lot of uh, overhead on uh, uh, transaction proce processing. So we used uh, TMP TMPFS partition, so everything was in memory, and we have a higher uh, TPS. And uh, we used uh, one gigabyte database with PG bench scale 133 and all default defaults from uh, 12 version of uh, Postgres. And uh, do not do any PG bench tellers and PG bench branches updates to, to lower log contention because uh, we have a very limited uh, number of records in branches and tellers, much less than accounts number. And uh, when we uh, try to update in the single transaction all these tables, then we can wait uh, in, on logs uh, for another clients and other threads and other connections. And uh, actually it, it, removing these uh, updates uh, raises uh, TPS uh, almost twice. Uh, so the final uh, pgbench running uh, script was like that. We, we used uh, this uh, custom SQL script without uh, tellers and branches updates. And uh, the final results looks like that. Actually, they uh, fluctu fluctuate on my machine uh, in one or two percent and uh, around uh, this uh, uh, 6, 000, 6, 16 thousands of TPS. And uh, you can see that uh, with a smaller size of uh, P-Track map, uh, uh, about uh, 64 uh, megabytes, uh, the overhead is indistinguishable and uh, it rises uh, a bit uh, toward one gigabyte of uh, P-Track map. But actually one gigabyte of P-Track map is enough to track uh, changes without uh, false positives in a one ter terabyte database. Uh, so in, in the worst case, uh, the overhead is about one, two, three percent, and uh, this is not so large. Uh, everything uh, from P-Track and uh, PG Pro Backup uh, is open source, and uh, you can download and uh, create issues and uh, read the documentation uh, uh, on GitHub. Uh, so if you have any uh, questions and comments, you can write uh, me on email, uh, check uh, right on Twitter, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, we're now streaming live, and Alexi is here to wrap up. Oh, and uh, hello. Uh, hello, um, and uh, so I, I hope that uh, anyone uh, have had a chance uh, to, to watch my talk because I had the problems to do it myself. Um, and uh, so I, I, I see uh, questions now, question, finally one question now. If p -track only hooks on the storage manager, does that mean any modifications made in WAL file, but not yet persisted will be lost on the crash? Uh, yeah, it is true. Uh, but uh, here we rely on the fact that we replay all these changes again after the crash. So uh, uh, 
uh, once uh, it, it will be still, uh, it, it will be finally persisted back to disk. And uh, so we, we will track uh, all those uh, changes then. So it's, it, 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 it's not a problem, but uh, it, it is, uh, uh, so partially it is a problem because we have uh, to rise our wall level to a replica at least because, uh, uh, because uh, otherwise in, uh, on wall level minimal, some uh, changes uh, uh, do not written, uh, isn't, isn't, are not written to, to wall and uh, we will never replay and then never catch again. And uh, also, uh, I, I noticed uh, after as I recorded my talk that uh, I, I was a bit uh, frivolous about we do, do not care uh, about uh, concurrent access uh, to uh, our p -track map uh, just because we use atomics. Actually, we do care uh, a, a little bit because, and uh, we use uh, this uh, uh, atomic uh, compare exchange and uh, we do it in a loop uh, until uh, we uh, receive that the, the confirmation that uh, we put uh, 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 we put newer uh, LSN uh, than it was there. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. No, I don't see anything anything new in the RC. No, neither do I. So, okay. I, so I just want to, to, to say thank you oh. if anyone anyone uh, uh, watched my talk. Feel free to contact me and write uh, questions uh, after after that. Okay, Th thank you, Alexi. Thank you for coming in and doing the Q and A session. I appreciate it.